patients. I want to open this meeting tonight. I want to welcome everybody here tonight. Good evening. Just one more time. Good evening. It is a good evening in East New York. I want to welcome you all to tonight's meeting here at Community Board 5 in a very special way as chairman of the board. My name is Andre T. Mitchell. I am honored to welcome everyone here on behalf of our board membership, our district office, and our community at large. Thank you so much for making your way here tonight and being very kind and, 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 and patient as we, you know, this is a historic night as we begin the night's meeting. I want to welcome you all also, not just as the chair of the community board, but as the founder and the executive officer of Man Up Incorporated, which is one of the greatest non-for-profits in the city and state of New York, who we are blessed to have here in East New York, where we were founded, and we are the co-occupants and the organizations that run this beautiful space with Good Shepherd Services called the Prince Joshua Avito Community Center. We are excited to host the first community board meeting here tonight, official community board meeting here tonight, because when we envisioned this building being constructed, we had all of you in mind. We knew that one day we would be able to pull our community together. We wanted to have a safe space, a clean space, a new space where we can meet like this. And we don't have to worry about the ceiling falling on us. We don't have to worry about many other things. Let me just say that. Because we as a board, we come a long way, am I right? For people who are East New Yorkers, you know what I'm talking about. The Prince Joshua Avito Community Center is a state-of-the-art, two-story, $11.5 million building that's open to the general public Monday through Saturday as early as 9 a.m. to as late as 9 p.m. for every member of the community in East New York, and I'm telling you what I know now, we've only been open a year, a little over a year. We've been servicing Brownsville, Canarsie. We have folks coming in from Long Island to use this beautiful building. But we want you, East New York, primarily to know that this is your building. For people who know of where this place is situated, it sits on what used to be a vacant parking lot for NYCHA. It was a vacant parking lot for almost three decades. And it became an eyesore. And because of the leadership and the visionary leadership that we have and the type of leadership that we have, and we're privileged to have one of the primary, premier leaders present of uh, visionaries of this building, our assembly member Charles Barron is front and center. And because of his leadership and his vision, we were able to convert what used to be an eyesore into a gym. Not just a gymnasium, but a G-E-M, a gem. And this is something that uh, if you get a chance to tour, look upstairs on first floor, take a second floor, take a tour. Look along the walls, look inside the rooms. We have everything. This is a brand new facility, state of the art top of the line. And without that brother and his type of leadership leading the way, securing the capital dollars to make sure that buildings like this is real and make it accessible for communities of East New York like ours, we would not be able to be having this meeting in this, in this type of space. So once again, I'm very glad that he made himself present. Let's clap it up for brother assembly member Charles Barron. And we will hear from him very shortly. Um, the building was named Prince Joshua Vito. For some of us who don't recall, five years or more ago, a young six-year-old and a seven-year-old were playing in the, across the street in the park, and they were told to go upstairs in the building. And when they went in the building, they got on an elevator, and unfortunately, they were met by a person that was out of his mind who decided to try to butcher these two children. 
he decided to stab these two children. And unfortunately, Prince Joshua Avito expired because of his injuries. And young seven-year-old Michaela Capers, his best friend, she was stabbed over 14 times. And she too almost lost her life. How do I know? Because of the leadership that I've been trained by some of my great trainers that are present, we respond to these type of tragedies. And myself and other leaders in East New York, we went from here, from where the tragedy happened, to the hospital. We was with the family. Within minutes, we were visiting the, the patients. And at that time, Michaela, um, and we was there just to be able to support them to make sure the hospital had the best doctors, make sure they were getting the best care. And we wanted to make sure that the family was being consoled properly because this place turned into a media circus. And it was pandemonium. If you can imagine two babies being almost butchered to death. It shook this entire neighborhood. And the leadership, again, and I'm, I'm respectfully proud to talk about its leadership because it's about leadership, was able to corral the community and bring us together so that we did not go out of, because it was a, 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 almost a manhunt for the person who was allegedly responsible. This neighborhood wanted payback, and they wanted payback yesterday. And we had to make sure that nobody did anything that wasn't wise and that wasn't safe. We wanted justice, too, and that's exactly what we ultimately got. And when that person was ultimately arrested, you know, the neighborhood was able to take some calm, but we wasn't healed as yet. And so what we decided to do was how do we bring community back? Since then, the leadership again with Ms. Inez Barron, the councilwoman now, and the assembly member, and the community board, and communities of people that was involved with the family, we were able to rename this street after Prince Joshua. Within a year, this block was co-named the Prince Joshua Vito Way. So you're not only on Skank Avenue, you're on Prince Joshua Avito's way. And because of the projects that was going on in his district and his foresight, we knew that there was construction that was planned for this very grounds. And that in his wisdom and in, his, and, in, in, in the way that he leads, and I'm proud to have learned alongside of him, we were able to convince the developer that they needed to include a safe space as part of the project if they wanted the community support. And in that, we got this building constructed. But community had no idea. We knew that we were going to name this building after Prince Joshua Avito. And now we're proud to be able to sit inside of officially the Prince Joshua Avito Community Center. Clap it up one more time. <laughs> Talk about how you turn tra uh, tragedy, right? Sometimes that's uncontrollable into triumph. You're looking at it. And something that you can see with community when you come together, what we can do together, providing that we stick together and we act together. We can have this city build these type of projects all over the place if we just continue to learn how to be a community as we are. Again, I'm proud to be here. I want to, again, say to my board members that are present, thank you for coming up. Today's our last meeting of the month, of the year. This is our last session, the June month meeting. So board members that are present, thank you for also being here. And being a community board member, for some people they may think because I look so good. <laughs> I just have a high self-esteem, I'm not conceited. Some people assume sometimes that this is a paid position. Board members, for the community that don't know, this is volunteer work. This is community service at its best. Okay, so that's awesome. We all got day jobs, night jobs. Some of us mommy, daddies. Some of us is grandpa and grandma yays. Am I right? We love our family too, but we committed ourselves to serving you. And so we welcome you to our board meeting. Uh, to our board meeting. For those of you who haven't been here, you know that we like to impress community, make sure that we have some, some fine refreshments. We want to thank one of our board members, uh, Andrew Walcott, who is the CEO of Fusion East. If you enjoyed some of the, the delicatessens out there in the common area, we want to thank that brother for donating that tonight. 
as well. Thank you so much, Andrew, for always just being an ideal and a model uh, board member and a proprietor. It's called Fusion East, sir. Fusion East is on Elton Street in the Elton Street corridor that leads into the Gateway Mall. All right. All right. Yes, sir. All right? So you should visit Fusion East, and it's a beautiful place to visit and have lunch and breakfast and dinner and all of the above. So what we did as a community board at five is that we put community first. We wanted to make sure, did you hear the jazz? How many of you heard the jazz? We have one of those, um, and I'm gonna put him on the spot right now. We have one of them young reporters. He's present, and I met him on his way in from the Brooklyn Eagle. And he said that he takes, you know, he goes to go to three community boards. Me and Brother Karan, uh, we were just joking with him, but we meant it at the door that uh, our board meeting, our board, our community board meetings are different than others. And he's like, oh, well, so what's the difference, right? And we said, okay, sit back and take a look and take a ride with us. And so I want, we're going to talk to him a little later, but Josh Goldberg, I believe, is in it. I'm sorry? Nowhere Goldberg is present. And we're going to ask him, everybody ask him if it's different, if this is the, board, the best board meeting. I ain't want to gossip, you ain't hear from me. But my friends at WNET is present. Let's clap it up for WNET. And one of them brothers told me today, Noah, that Community Board 5 is the best community board meeting that they are attend in the city of New York. And I said, are you willing to put that in writing? So, and he said, without any problem. All right, so I'm not one to gossip, you hear from me. I'm only, and I'm not, again, we're not bragging. We're just really proud. We have some of our elders that are present from our community board. I want to welcome them back. Ms. Wilson is present. Let's clap it up for her. She worked with the community board for so many years. And I understand also that our former chairman of the board, um, Mr. Earl Williams' daughter, Judge Williams is also present as well. We want to thank her for being here as well. And so, if anything, you can ask some of our veterans that are present, Felicianos, Ms. Brights, and others. This board has just only continued right down the right road, and all we've been doing is just building on the success of what we had prior. And so, we're looking at it from that end. We just wanted to make our neighborhood proud, and so we take a lot of pride in our details. Okay, sir? Did you hear the jazz? Okay, good. I don't know no other, but as long as you heard the jazz. Give me one second, sister. All right? So we just want to be able to show you that we want to make sure that we put you and we thought of you and we kept you first. So here, unlike other meetings, the community voices go first. Okay, when you go to other community board meetings, they like to have the bureaucrats and all the everybody else talk to the community, and then by the time community get to talk to, they talking to themselves. We tell the bureaucrats and every other agency and people who want to come to CB5, you got to sit tight and listen, and listen, even all of us as board members, am I right? We are trained to listen to the community first, because this is a community board, not a board community. So respectfully, our neighbors are first. We've asked them to sign in. We have their names. If you have signed in, you are going to be heard first. We ask that you respect the time limit. We say minimum of two minutes, maximum of three. And we are tight on it because we have a, a sergeant of arms by the name of Mrs. Joyce Scott Brayboy. Right. Clap it up for her because she don't play. And that's not to be rude or disrespectful. Would you like the first vice? Page one. All right. Well, she's going to take the top. She's going to do the time and the clock. And your name is going to be called by our first vice, Miss Alice Loman. Please, the microphones are right here to my right, maybe to your left. If you were signed up, please come forward. And we're here to listen to you. But this is a gym. This is not a church. Hello? This is a gym, Brother Paul. This is not a mosque. And no, really, because we really want to listen to you. We want to help you. We have chairs of committees that are present. If we can help you ASAP, we want to get the chairs and members of the committee on it and some of the agencies and elected officials that are present as well. We can help you right away. But you got to get right to it, okay? 
That's all I'm saying respectfully. So I'm going to turn the microphone over to the first vice, Ms. Alice Norman. She'll call your name up, and you have two, two minutes, three minutes max. She said two minutes. Good evening, everyone. The first speaker is George Leonard, principal of Campa Charter School. Good evening. I got to get started fast. I just have two minutes. My name is George Leonard. I've been in education since 1981. My specialty is science and math. I was trained by Frank Mickens of Boys and Girls High School. No, 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 do or die. And through my years of educating children, what I realized is that you have to instill the rigor very early. Because when it's done in high school, it's just, it's just too late. And what I was able to do throughout my career was to prove that if you take the high school curriculum and bring it into the elementary school ranks, then those students will not only be better prepared for high school when they get there, but they'll be able to deal with the type of instruction that prepares them for undergraduate school and graduate school. And I have proven this time and time again, showing that if you introduce algebra in third and fourth grade and biology in the same, same discipline, third and fourth grade, then you'll, you'll, what you'll prove is that the K to five curriculum may not be configured in such a way where it prepares them for what bridges middle school and what bridges high school. Now, I know my time is short, but I think it's important that you understand that Campa Charter School, where I'm the principal, which is on Vermont between Stanley and Linden, in this community, I've been there three years. It was on life support when I got there. I, I moved the right adults in, moved the other adults out, and what we accomplished was the following. Because I'm a biology teacher, I assumed the position of teacher. So I'm in the classroom. In fact, I taught four classes because I really didn't trust that I was going to be the right person for this particular feat. So I took 18 students, taught them living environment, had all the lab requirements, and out of 18 students, all 18 passed. And some scored within 90. Those same students, we also taught them integrated algebra. And all of the students passed that also. And so we, so we decided, I was gonna, it gets better. Because that was just my second year. Then when I learned the terrain, and I had, again, the right adults. Because a person say, say, says that they're a teacher, it doesn't mean that they can teach. Because um, it's just a word. Um, just because somebody say they care about children doesn't mean that they really care about children. So for me, you know, I'm from the show me state. So don't tell me that you can do it. Do it. You know, don't, don't ask the child. Don't ask the child. Don't ask the child if they understand. Have them demonstrate that they understand by getting the problem right. And so that's, you know, that's the sounds of silence. Now, this year, this year, we gave the children U.S. government regents, Algebra 1, Excuse me, Geometry. Principal, principal, principal. Excuse us, sir. How you doing? I just respectfully ask if you can close because we are in a tight time constraint. I will and close. I want others to know that you can speak to the principal if he sticks around to the, at the end of the meeting, and honestly, we can have a, a quasi, and we can also invite you back to our education committee, and we can have a special meeting about your school, right? Our youth and education committee, honestly, we'll welcome you back. Okay, I All promise right? I will close. Thank you so much. So I want to end it with this. Yes, sir. We had our first graduating class, and those students are entering the ninth grade 
with the U.S. government regions, the algebra regions, the geometry regions. Understand the, you know, how this works. Because you get algebra and geometry out of the way, living environment and U.S. government out of the way. Our goal is this. We have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. We want those students to graduate from that school with six regents exams completed before entering ninth grade. And, Thank you. And this is a reality. Thank so, you. So with that, with that being said, um, my claim to fame is that I've been the person that has proven that you can take a child that's eight years old Principal, and prepare I them for the regents. So, thank you so much, Principal. Camp Let's School. talk it up one more time. Thank you so much. Principal, thank you so much, Principal. Go to the Don't website. All right. Yes, sir. Who said this job was easy? Ms. Bray, Ms. Bray boy, are you all right tonight? I'm good. I'm good. I got my, uh, Noah Goldberg from Brooklyn Eagle. Hey, everybody. I'll be brief to make up for uh, that going over a little bit. <laughs> Uh, thanks for having me. This place is great. I enjoyed the food a lot. Uh, the jazz was nice, too. And I like the community announcements. Go first. Um, I'm a reporter with the Brooklyn Eagle. I used to be with the New York Daily News. Uh, for the news, I covered uh, the Karina Vetrano, Chanel Lewis trial. Um, I do a lot of criminal justice reporting. I'm covering Brooklyn criminal courts for uh, the Brooklyn Eagle, as well as Anything criminal justice related, I'm covering the city's plan to create new borough-based jails. Um, and I'm also covering three community boards, Community Board 3, 5, and 16, so bed -Stuy, East New York, and Brownsville. And I'm going to all the community board meetings, giving out my cards, and trying to hear more from the people in those communities if they have criminal justice related stories, as well as any neighborhood stories that they think we should be covering. I think it's really important to actually get out into further parts of the borough that are, you know, historically really undercovered, especially because the Eagle mostly just covered Brooklyn Heights for a really long time, and there's a lot of other stories in the borough. So I'm going to be giving out my card. Uh, I'll say my number and my email right now, because I don't have enough cards for all of you. Uh, my Phone number is 323, I'm from Los Angeles, 286-2166. One more time, 323-286-2166. And my email is just noah, N-O-A-H, at brooklyneagle.com. So feel free to reach out with any stories. Thank you, and feel free to approach me. Thank you. Anna Santiago and Joseph Selman. Good evening, all. Good evening. Right. Um, to the members of the board and to the community, my comments tonight is in support of an elected civilian review board. My name is Joseph Selman. I'm a Vietnam Air veteran, retired postal worker, here tonight representing the NYC campaign for an elected civilian review board campaign as an effective means to hold police accountable. As most of you are aware, the Civilian Complaint Review Board is undergoing renewed scrutiny as a result of its ineffectiveness. We are here tonight because East New York is one such neighborhood most impacted by police misconduct, giving credence and understanding as to why the appointed and biased CCRB has little or no credibility in this community. Briefly, in my allotted time, I would like to address three critical components of the proposed legislation that is being sponsored in the City Council by the Honorable Inez Barron. <clears throat> 
The three components are, one, that the members of the ECRB board is elected from community district. Two, that disciplinary decision be binding and not subject to being ignored or reduced by the police commissioner. And three, that there be an elected independent special prosecutor for all cases of criminal misconduct. As we expected, there will be an upcoming hearing before the city council public safety committee. And we are here to garner the support of the community and community board number five. At this time, we would like to urge that, that the CP, CB5 give its support for an elected civilian review board and that you assist in raising awareness on the matter. We would like to request that the board consider the issue as, as, as an agenda item and that we be allowed to give a more detailed presentation at your September meeting of the board. So Anna and I are happy to answer any questions as we um, mill around after this meeting and we'll be here for that purpose. Thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Thank you. Amanda, oh, I'm, I'm speaking as well, sorry. Excuse me. Good evening, community board members and community members. Thank you kindly for your time today. And I really appreciate everybody making their time and their way here today. It's really important to us. Um, my name is Anna Santiago, and I have been a member of the East New York neighborhood for more than five decades. This is the place in which I grew as a child and brought up my children. I'm a very proud member of this community and even more proud of the children within this community who are striving to achieve their precious dreams. I am currently a member of the Elected Civilian Review Board. My goal here tonight is to ask you to join us in this campaign. There is a real fight against the safety of our community members, including our youth, including our youth, and that includes our children, our small children as well. Complaints of police violence are the highest in East New York. We must unite to end this violence. Our innocent children suffer as a result of this unchecked police force. The CCRB, which is the Civilian Complaint Review Board, which is what is now what holds police officers accountable, as it stands now, does not protect from these abuses. We must replace it with the ECRB. It will be a starting place to begin to bring safety to our community from the atrocious criminal acts that we are enduring at the hands of criminal police officers. It's been five decades that I have personally observed and endured police abuse of power. As a young 16-year-old, my mom was at the emergency room. As I entered to ensure myself that she would have an interpreter, an officer immediately, without questions asked, physically assaulted me. He grabbed me by my arm and pulled and dragged me across the floor so hard that he ripped off my coat off my sleeve. I can do, I, all I can do was yell for help and try to get away from this violent act that I was enthralled at. Hospital staff never came to my aid and that's because he criminalized me from the beginning. Sorry, I lost my place. He never came to my aid. Before long, there must have been more than 10 officers surrounding me. I was confused and appalled. To my horror, when the initial officer was pulled away, there I saw my mom in the middle trying to save my life. The rest of the story, you can imagine the outcome. It was not one filled with justice prevailing. For me as a child, no care or justice was afforded. Imagine if it is you. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your beloved children. We all deserve to live and to be protected. When you go home, please ponder what justice means to you. Isn't justice for all? Look and choose from among your family members. Which ones are you willing to sacrifice to an unchecked police force? 
None of us, are, um, we, we're not, none of us are willing to sacrifice our children. But I want you to really ponder what I'm talking about today. Excuse me. Respectfully, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Ms. Santiago. Yes. But we have to, we have to close yeah, now. Yeah, I'm going to close right Please, now. Please, because we yes. have to move forward. Thank Please you. Please ponder what justice means to you. And because we have to be courageous, we have to make sure that we attend these meetings and do a legislative change. We don't want to have a march. We don't want to have a national conversation anymore. We want to do something on the legislative level where we could really hold someone accountable for their criminal behavior. So I thank you for your thank time, you, and I Ms. hope Brown. that you can volunteer with us. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you both. Amanda Hello. E.P. Hello. When you hear this sound, listen for that sound. That means your time is up. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. My name is Amanda Etienne. I work with the Child Center of New York, and I'm happy to say that we are opening a youth center at 127 Pennsylvania Avenue here in East New York. So excited. So we're here because we've posted positions. We're looking for the director. We're looking for our assistant director. Um, and later on in, in July, we will be um, posting for our group leaders, our youth advocates, our coaches. We want your help. So I'm here today. I have cards on the side. I have um, a, a, billboard, a kind of a little um, uh, post-it where you can reach out to me. You can reach out to our organization and, and to see what's posted and what's available. And I'll be around for the, for the entire meeting. Thank you. Charles Bullock. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Um, my name is Charles Bullock. I'm a part of the Youth and Education Committee. Um, I've been a member of the Carpenters Union for about 15 years. I'm a shop steward and also a trustee for my executive board. Um, I have information for the community. July 1st, which is this Monday, they're giving out 500 applications for apprentices. So 60% um, of the apprentices get selected through this process. I was on back of the line in 2005 and I got selected through this process. And, um, okay. and um, I have pre-apprenticeship information. Building Works is a pre-apprenticeship program that's like a boot camp and it helps children and adults, men and, women, men and women, get into the union. Construction skills is also a youth program that helps transition kids from high schools to get into the unions. There's also a pre-apprenticeship called Helmets to Hard Hats. If you know somebody that's in the military, they get, e they get easy um, access into the unions. And there's also a program called NU for women, non-traditional employment for women, that helps women to get into the unions. Um, my, my goal is to help the young brothers and sisters of the communities have access to these type of benefits, 401k, dental benefits. A lot of these job sites that you see going on around here are non-union. Non-union means they might be paid cash and they're not getting no benefits. I don't want to see people die on job sites. I take safety seriously as a shop steward. And um, I just want people to develop, to understand that I'm trying to develop a relationship with the community and the unions, so young brothers could have good jobs like me. You could make six figures. I made over six figures last year, way over six figures. And I want the, want the brothers and community to have the same opportunities as me. So I'm not going to stop doing this. I'm going to do this every month. You're going to always see me. I'm going to be at every event, and I'm not going to stop. All right. So. So, so again, J July 1st, 395 Hudson Street, Clarkston Street entrance. They're giving out 500 applications at 6 a.m. Yeah. The cheat code is on Friday, they begin opening up the line because you usually see people camping out and you look on the news and you see this thing looks crazy. But they open up the line this Friday at 5 p.m. They start giving out applications at 6 a.m. July 1st. 
So if you know any young brothers or sisters that want to get involved in the, in the construction union, there's a lot of benefits in, to, to being a, a part of the union. So um, at 6 a.m., they're giving out these applications. If you know any young brothers, sisters, let them know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Regina Wilson. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Regina Wilson, and I'm an outreach coordinator for New York City Emergency Management, and I'm also a New York City firefighter. I'm here today to educate you on the CERT program, which is a community emergency response team. Uh, I don't believe you guys have one in CB5, so we want to try and make sure we get volunteers who will be a part of New York City Emergency Management. You will be trained by the NYPD, FDNY, and the New York City Emergency Management staff on emergency preparedness. So we're training you to, to uh, sometimes be deployed to help some of our res first responders, but most importantly for you to educate the community. So you'll be going out trying to teach people how to prepare and be safe against any uh, floods, fires, you know, knowing where your evacuation zones are, uh, knowing how to get emergency information from the city. And so I will be signing up people today. I have a sheet that we can get your information from. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be here. Also, I have some um, Ready New York e My Emergency Plan. If anybody needs it, in here is a, a map for your hurricane evacuation zone and your nearest shelters, how to prepare for an emergency, how to make a go bag. There's some really uh, resourceful information here. So if anyone needs to see me, I'll be back in the corner and have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Leslie Fields. That's my height. Welcome to everyone. Kick off Summer Wellness Saturday, June 29th, 12 to 4 p.m. at the Pink Playground, corner of Stanley Avenue and Elder Lane. Games, dancing, face painting, and photo booth. Also, shop local first, Sunday, June 30th, 2 to 6 p.m. There you have jewelry, men's skin care products, candles, clothes, organic food and drinks, poetry and music. That's on Sunday at 333 New Lots Avenue off of Georgia Avenue, hosted by East New York Restoration LDC and funded by the Department of, by the Department of Parks and Recreation through the Office of Councilwoman Inez Barron. Also um, at 333 New Lots Avenue, um, we're developing walking groups in East New York in this local area here, Linden Houses um, uh, Boulevard, and so, and Penn Workman. So please come out and walk. Come out and meet someone, have fun at this event, and please contemplate your time and where fitness fits in. Because every time I speak to people, they always say they don't have time to exercise. But if you don't have time to exercise and you're not gonna have time for a whole lot of things, because you won't be around long. So, please, um, it's a good time. All right then, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joyce Cowpack. just to let you know a little bit about what we'll be doing this summer. So Amanda and I both work at the Spring Creek branch, which is on Flatlands in New Jersey. But there are many branches in East New York. There's New Lots and Arlington and Cypress Hills. And what we're gonna say is 
you know, pertinent to any of these branches. And basically what we want to tell you is to please come into the library, to bring your children into the library, and to enjoy the summertime. Currently, we're doing something called summer reading, and that's a program we do every year. It's mostly for children and teens, but some adults like to also partake. So the prize for summer reading for every single child that participates and completes it is a voucher. And the voucher is for two tickets to an event at Barclays Center. So any child that completes it, we will give you the voucher, and then you get online and choose an event you'd like to go to. So in addition to, thank you, thank you. And we have to thank Barclays Center for their generosity because they want to get the community involved, as do we. We also are doing a lot more during the summer when the kids are out of school. Lots of programs like arts and crafts and movies. But Amanda, who especially works with the teen and the tween population, she's going to be doing lots of special things. Would you like to sure. tell some of the special um, things so you're doing? So some of the things, like next Tuesday, there'll be a tie-dye event. We'll have some um, events where we're going to teach the kids how to make solar panel ovens out of a pizza box. And they can make s'mores. Um, so lots of kind of different things to get the kids involved and to get them interested. OK. So we can just encourage you to encourage the children in your life and yourself to please come in and see what it's all about. And everything's free, so that's even better, right? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Virginia McElevy. Good evening. I'm a resident of this district, and um, I'm, I'm here. My concern is about sanitation. Um, I've been looking around. Um, I spoke with Inez Barron's office, and I really thank you all, thank the, her office for reaching out, back out to me and really helping me. Because when I was trying to reach out to other people, you know, I was getting really negative results. But um, I wasn't standing down, and so the, the young man, I can't remember his name, he really stu stood on the line. I spoke to um, a John tra um, trainer, and um, we were talking about the garbage piling up all around, you know, um, NYCHA, even the building I live in, Remeter, they are they're, they're putting their garbage out. The stores are putting their garbage out. We have a large amount of garbage, which are bringing rodents. I am a military vet, and, and, and I'm disabled, and my concern is for the disabled people, the elderly people, and our children being outside, and, and you know, we have garbage. And you know, I looked up some information on sanitation and why they were formed in the first place is because, you know, they were formed to take away the garbage because people are getting gravely ill. And so when I see garbage, three garbage bags high and three car lengths wide, on this is just for one project. You know, it's like something has to be done about that. I have noticed and took um, videos and took pictures of garbage. I get out of church on Sunday at 2 o'clock. Garbage is already outside. And so I was informed by the Department of Sanitation that garbage is not supposed to be put out until after 4. Um, I've noticed that um, I even have called because I needed to make a paper trail in case this wasn't going anywhere. I just needed to be on record that I'm complaining about the amount of garbage that's been put out, especially with NYCHA, you know. And that was, uh, my thing was, with them was, well, you need to give NYCHA, send out an inspector, give them a ticket, whatever it is that you guys do, because it's your job to keep us safe, you know, and keep us healthy from this garbage. My other thing is, because the garbage is a really big thing, you know. Um. Could you wrap it up? 
Okay. Because your time is up. All right. You know, um, and I just thank um, everyone that, that helped me, you know, just get to the point of with, with the garbage thing and everything. And I think that us as people, we ha have to do three things. We got to recycle, reuse, and rethink how we handle our garbage because we are making a lot of garbage and we got to bring that garbage down. Thank you for letting thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you. Albert Scott. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Albert Scott, and I'm with the uh, Homeowners Association. I'll be real brief. Uh, I just want to invite everyone to our 2019 roundtable. Uh, is the threats to generational wealth and home ownership. This will be part one of our Summer of Discontent series. The threats to generational wealth and home ownership is serious. Uh, we all are fully aware of the deed thefts that's taking place but there's something more sinister that's happening. We also have to worry about the third party transfer. And just a side note, I believe July 10th, they're having a public hearing in reference to the third party transfer at uh, City Hall. More information, see me after this uh, meeting. But even more so, there are other threats, such as local banks not doing their due diligence or not giving, not more or less providing loans to existing homeowners. As a result, that's a threat for future homeowners, but also to existing homeowners on that end. So the part one series, of course, is going to identify the threats. Part two, which will be held in August, is going to identify the homeowner's direct action that's going to take place. But first, we have to know what's ailing us and what's hampering our um, future home ownership within East New York, Brownsville, Bushwick, Red Hook, homeowners th all throughout Brooklyn will be in attendance because I begin to realize this is not only happening in East New York and Brownsville, but our friends in Bushwick is starting to feel the pain on these things. Friends in our Red Hook as far as homeowners. So I'm asking and encouraging everyone to come out to this uh, round table, part one, which will be Saturday, July 13th at 10.30 a.m. at the New, Luck, New Lots Public Library. Um, I'll be here at the end of the meeting if you have any additional uh, questions as far as if you want to uh, uh, organize and ha bring a group up to City Hall so we can hear their findings on the investigation report in reference to the third party transfer, which targets mainly black and brown home owners on that end. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Brother Paul. Asalaamu Alaikum Shalom Hotel. Uh, good evening, everybody. I'm here on behalf of uh, the Coalition for Community Advancement. There's a flyer, that I think, or a questionnaire that we've been handing out. It's called the Cease and Desist Questionnaire. Uh, we all know that this community is the hottest real estate in New York City right now. We're under attack. We're under attack. This questionnaire is asking a different question concerning the real estate and the harassment that you're receiving from real estate uh, companies that are calling you and other people who are trying to purchase your homes. And again, very simply, it's, it's very dear to me, but Al touched on it. We have to understand that under the demographics of this community, predominantly homeowners are here are black and Latino. We've been here a long time. Generational wealth is what people are after. And we're under attack where people are coming and disturbing our peace. Most of the homeowners are older. They don't understand what's going on. They come with these schemes. People are calling them every day, telling them, and, and, and the anxiety about it is overwhelming. I've had calls myself. So please fill out this four-point questionnaire. We're trying to get the governor to challenge these people's license to stop harassing you. you under, credit, under a credit card, collectors can't call you a certain time of night. These people can't leave all this literature all over your, over your steps and your doors and banging your doors trying to get your property. Again, if we do cease and desist, so we can remain and exist in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Paul. Nahali, Nahali Ortega.
Hello, beautiful people. My name is Noeli Artiaga. Um, today I'm speaking on behalf, uh, in my capacity as an organizer for a grassroots organization called Party Blackly. Uh, so that's B-L-A-C-K-L-Y, one word. Um, and so we're a grassroots event planning organization where we feature black artists at black owned venues or black friendly venues. Um, but to keep with the theme of our people being under attack, this summer we're hosting what we call the Black Hour. And so essentially we'll be hosting happy hours between six to nine at black owned businesses, specifically bars that are in gentrified areas or in gentrifying areas that are seeing increased harassment. So tomorrow is our first Black Hour at Old to Babel which is at 772 Dean Street. So Owns Babel has only been open for five years. Um, there was no complaints filed against them for the first two and a half years that they were um, in business. In the last two and a half years, there have been on a weekly basis calls placed against Owns Babel. And in this year alone, the calls have now been bi-weekly. So if you look at the 311 data, these calls are coming in at eight in the morning, seven in the morning, six in the morning, when the, the business is not even like open. And so this is just like one example. In Prospect Heights, where Old Tobago is located, the black population between 2010 and 2017 has decreased 43%. So if you would like to learn more about Party Blackly, or if you know that there's um, a venue that we should be bringing more attention to, please feel free to follow us on Instagram, at Party Blackly, and we're also on Facebook, at Party Blackly. I hope to see you guys tomorrow at Old to Babel, 772 Dean Street. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Just for the record, I just want to let you know I, I have the air conditioners being turned down. All right? So we apologize if it's any inconvenience. June Ennis from Grant. Good night, everyone. My name is Joanne Ennis. I'm actually representing Cleveland Pitkin Block Association. I'm here with one of my neighbors. Hi, I'm Vanita Rivers. And <laughs> shout out to East New York Restoration. Um, <laughs> the reason I'm here uh, today is to let folks know that we are grant winners. This is our second grant. Today I picked up our, <laughs> our sign and our check. Um, our first check was the Love Your Block. Um, our first grant that we won was the Love Your Block grant to help us beautify our block. If you are ever on Cleveland between Pitkin and Belmont, you can take a drive down to see our beautification, to take a look at our project. Um, the second part of the grant, which is the neighborhood grant, was to continue our beautification project because the first grant was $1,000, which was not sufficient to complete our project. Um, we're also gonna collab with um, Cleveland Vegetable Garden. Um, and one of the reasons we are doing that is we because they're not, um, sufficient uh, fresh fruits or vegetable stores in our community. We would like to collab with the community garden so that our neighbors can have fresh fruits and vegetables. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so that our neighbors can have fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we're really looking forward to that second part of our project and that's it. Uh, if you're ever on <laughs> you can also follow us on Instagram. We are Cleveland Pickin Block Association. And I just want to encourage my neighbors to take advantage of these grants 
the application is very simple and very easy. You don't have to be a grant writer. Uh, there's money out there, take advantage of it. Thank you. Damien Mercado. Good evening, everybody. My name is Damien. I'm the outgoing um, treasurer for the 75th Precinct Community Council. Um, I came to announce that we were going to celebrate National Night Out Against Crimes and Violence at Highland Park. But Highland Park is under construction, so it's going to be done at Robert Benneville Park. It is at 1411 Soded Avenue by City Line. The streets in between, I don't know that. But if you want the flyer, be it, uh, text it to you. My number is 917-652-2850. By the same token, I would like to congratulate Mr. Alberto Ramos, who became the 75th Precinct Community Council President. <laughs> he will be serving starting the month of September. I also, I would like to thank the community. There were eight long years where I served with love, dignity, and compassion for all my community members. I love you all. That doesn't mean that I lost. I just got term limited. Eight years, four consecutive two-year terms. And I thank you because most of those years were without any opposition, out of contest. I thank you guys in my community for all of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vincent Reagan. Good evening, family. Nobody said that. Meekin's Meekin, representative was here, some other people, and nobody addressed us as family, right? My name is Vincent Riggins, and I'm gonna speak to you today uh, from my civic organization, which is called Bright Leadership Coalition. Bright is spelled B-R-I-T-E, and that's an acronym for Better Relationships in the East. So if you're in the East building, you prop building in your organization, you probably wanna get together with the person that's building better relationships in the East, all right? So I just want to welcome you and say also that I'm also a uh, co-chair, co-chair of public safety, right? <laughs> I got to forget that. Co-chair of public safety. My brother Paul is a uh, chair right now, and I'm also correspondent secretary for the 75th Precinct Council. Just so you have perfect information, the new administration starts in July, not September. So if you got some issues, you can call Alberto Ramos right now while he's doing the planning <laughs> session, all right? So we ain't gonna give him no summer off. I don't even think he wants a summer off because he knows about building organizations, so we're excited about that. Um, the other thing I wanna encourage everyone to do is to get involved in the community and not your own little organization. The strength and the power that we're gonna have as a community is gonna come through unity and not grants and all the rest of that. Grants help but we gotta come together as a unity, right? Right now, they got two bills upstate, right? African-American history that languished. African-American history. Everything that everybody talked about our children relates to them learning their true history so they can operate from a sense of pride and not from a perspective of slavery. You understand that? So they had two bills that, well, one bill that we believe the language was right. That's 1135, if you haven't did it, check it out, Brian Benjamin, right? It's language in upstate because you guys never called and said we want the bill. But they passed uh, something about driving license, right? Giving people driving license. Then check this out. This is why we gotta get together. Driving license in a city where everything is being turned into bike lanes. So it's an opportunity for them to do what? Write more summonses. They don't care about giving you a light. They hope you're gonna vote for them and all that. But that's not it. So we're not engaged in the process, and they upstate making decisions that really don't make any doggone sense, right? We, we don't have anywhere to park today because of bike lanes, but they just gave out, they want to give out three million more licenses. Listen, to undocumented people that don't speak English. So when the police 
No, I'm going to straighten that up too. Listen, I'm going to just give you the truth, and you can show it the way you want, right? Undocumented people, some of them have language problems, right? So the police roll up on them because they got an infraction. They pull over in the bike lane, right? So that creates additional problems. So everybody in here has to play a part in that as a community and also protect our, and also stop practicing discrimination against yourself. There is no such thing by any anthropologist of people of color. Thank you so much, sir. Mr. Vincent Riggins. Do your own homework. There right. you go. We are all, right. no, we no, are no, all, right. we are no. all right. African descendants. You are yes, African, Cari you're African Caribbean, African Puerto Rican, okay. brother, African brother. Brazilian, African brother German. Vincent. Stop practicing discrimination. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Reverend Dr. Anthony Graham. Good evening, everyone. I am the Reverend Dr. Anthony Graham, Senior Pastor of New Hope Family Worship Center. Yes, that's a good place to be, everybody. So we are located uh, on Livonia Avenue between Barbie and Skank. We take up the entire block. We have been in the community for 29 years, and we love East New York. Come on, somebody, give God praise. We love East New York. We love East New York, New York so much that we feed the community five days a week. Five days a week, you can come to our fellowship hall and receive free lunch. On Mondays, we provide breakfast. Tuesday through Friday, we provide free lunch from 12.30 to 2 o'clock. In addition to that, we provide clothing for the community. And we do a number of good things for the community. But we want to highlight a program that we have recently started that I believe will really benefit the community. And that is providing mentorship for our young black males. Now you know the statistics, you go to Google, you do the research, we have a problem with young black men in America. Is that right? We do. Well, we have decided we are going to do what we can do. And so what can we do? We have selected men, good men, men that have made their mark in the community, men that have uh, good examples to their families, and we have solicited these men and asked them to help in mentoring young men. I'm saying that because we're doing it in our church, and I believe we're at the point where we can extend it to the community. We're looking and thinking about single parents. There are many mothers who have young black men and they, young Hispanic males, they get to that place where they are taller than mom, stronger than mom, and mom needs some help. And so every Wednesday and Friday from 6 to 9, we have this program at our church. You can bring them. We will work with them. There is no charge, and we would be happy to be of assistance. God bless you. Thank you. Wilfredo Florentino. How y'all doing, community? Good evening. I'll make this brief. The hour is growing late. My name is Wilfredo Florentino, uh, and I am the co-founder of Rooted Theater Company. It is the only theater company in East New York. Oh, it's quiet out here. It's the only theater company in East New York, founded in 2013. Uh, we have two events per year. Uh, in the springtime, we have a show which just passed. And in the fall, we have a symposium where we ask the community to submit short pieces, uh, five-minute pieces. Uh, if you have an idea, last month I came here and someone emailed us about a piece concerning bullying. We've sat down with her and worked with her to produce the piece. Um, our email is info at rootedtheaterco.org. Again, rooted, uh, excuse me, info at rootedtheaterco. Dot org. Our website is rootedtheaterco.org, rootedtheaterco.org. There are flyers in the back table. And again, if you have any ideas about plays, we will begin soliciting plays for our fall symposium during the summer. Uh, you can like us on Facebook, tweeters, and Snapchats, all those things. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much. Thank you. That concludes the end of the public speaking.
But before I pass the mic over to the chairman, I would like to thank my coworkers from New York City Transit that came out tonight, and my aunt. Okay, so how you feeling, community? I'm looking at some of you now. I know it's cold, we're working on it. There was a time it wasn't any AC. And something about us as a people, now we got AC, we complain about that. <laughs> but we're working on it, okay? We're working to calm it down so you can feel comfortable. But I hope that you listen, as my, my, my first vice has said, a lot of information. We want to move the program along respectfully. And again, we are very privileged. This is the community elected officials portions. But we're always honored when we have the elected officials themselves who are present that come by our community board meetings and speak to you directly and give you updates and reports. This is not a strange place for the two most outstanding and most effective elected officials, in my personal opinion, that we can have as city council person and assembly member. I speak none other than the Barons, Inez Barron, Councilwoman Inez Barron, and assembly member Charles Barron that are present. Thank you for being here. Good evening. Normally I let my wife go first, but I want to say this. When we talk about immigrants and passing that license bill, we should not think that we can say negative things when we are all immigrants. Some of us are not. The license, immigrants are African. Immigrants are Caribbean, immigrants are Latin American, and if you speak English, it's because your oppressor was an Englishman. And if you speak Spanish, it's because your oppressor was a Spaniard. That's right. And if you speak French, it's because your oppressor was a Frenchman. That's right. And we shouldn't be proud of no white European language we speak when we all are an African people oppressed by Europeans who gave us their languages and their culture. Secondly, the bill that we passed was the good green bill, the green stop bill or green go bill. The reason we passed that is because our immigrant brothers and sisters who are being stopped by police and being deported disrespected, at least now they can get a license and, ride and drive safely, so it's a safety issue, and they'll have a license for identification. These same undocumented immigrants pay taxes. They pay taxes, and the taxes that they pay are a whole lot. So if we want to get rid of immigrants, get rid of Bush. Get rid of Trump. Get rid of those white European immigrants who came here and stole the land That's right. from the indigenous people who were African and so-called Indians. They are the immigrants. How dare they say that we can't go to Mexico? They stole those places. So I just wanted to make that straight, that we are one family. If we're going to say family, then we have all kinds of people in our family. And we need to keep that united. That's right. Secondly, I want to say that the marijuana bill that was passed, I want you all to be very, very clear about that so you don't go out there lighting up thinking it's legal. <laughs> you will get busted. So <laughs> the decriminalization is not legalization. So it is not legal. A, it's decriminalized. The reason why it's not legal, because when it came on the economic side of it, the governor and some of the white rip-off entrepreneurs, corporate leaders, didn't want to give enough of that profit to the black and brown community that suffered from this in prison. Mm -hmm. So they, ne they negotiated. They couldn't get any agreement on how many stores that can be opened up in our community. 
They couldn't get agreement on where the tax money was going to come from. Marijuana, you know, marijuana would have made $3.2 billion in this state. It's a multi-trillion dollar industry across the nation. Multi-trillion dollars. And you know, it's interesting. When white men want to monopolize on something, when we had it in the streets, it was pot and weed. When they get it, it's cannabis. <laughs> cannabis. It's some cute cannabis. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all, because I only know one way to be with y'all that's honest. I was going to vote yes for it to decriminalize it, but I am not for us smoking cannabis, weed, or pot. So now y'all can be mad at me all you want. I was going to vote yes because I had a choice. Either do my revolutionary work while you're in jail, or do my revolutionary work while you're getting high. So I said, I'll take getting high just to get you out of jail. Cannabis ain't no good for you. Weed ain't no good for you. And the, for medicinal use, yes. For people who want to who wanna use it to get better medically, I'm 100% before that. But I'm going to let you know, I used to smoke cannabis <laughs> when I was long, 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 long time ago. Well, long, y'all say long. No, let me hear you say long time ago. Way back then. Yeah, I smoked it. And these brothers were smoking with me. We used to play ball and everything. They said, man, you know, I play better when I get high. They ain't made a basket yet. <laughs> Couldn't even see the basket. <laughs> and the bad thing about marijuana now is that the THC count, the THC count that gets to the dope mind, dopamine, 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 help me out, teach, dopamine, that's that make you feel good chemical in your brain. So when the THC counts, it hits that, that's how you get high and feel good. It is not good for our children. At 14, 15, 16 year olds, they're doing it before they go to junior high school. It's not good for them. And if somebody else got to do that to cool out your, um, you know, so you don't have no stress, and so you can get your appetite and laugh a little bit, go right ahead. But this stuff is not good for our people. If we're going to be a liberated people, then we can't go around here getting high. Let me tell you what they're doing now. We got the fast food joints out here. Murder burgers killing you. Murder burgers. Then you got cigarettes, which is worse than marijuana. Tobacco. And for all of you who think that it's all right to take a nice little alcohol drink, that's worse than marijuana. Alcohol is worse. No, look, get no amens there. Look at them now. Talk about that alcohol. And they're talking about legalizing prostitution. So you're going to be able to get a cigarette, get some cannabis, and you're going to be able to get all of that stuff. And then, then after that, <laughs> you know, if you, if you want to. If you, OK, I'm moving on, moving on. So I'm just saying, I don't know what this world is coming to. And I'm not old school. So that is nothing new about that. So brothers and sisters, look out for the the law now, it basically says, if you have an ounce or less, it's going to be a $50 fine, and you won't be arrested for a misdemeanor. If you have an ounce or two, it'll be a $200 fine, and you won't be arrested, and it'd be a misdemeanor. And if you don't pay that fine or go to court, there will be a warrant out for your arrest. <laughs> Just want to let you know that. Here's a good part of it. They're going to expunge, clear all the records of those arrested for marijuana over the last 20 years. They're going to expunge the records. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. And then we're negotiating on what happens to those who are arrested right now. Are they going to be let out? So that's some of the things that they're negotiating. We also pass, passed nine historic rent regulation bills, nine of them. So now the landlords under rent regulation, when they want to make major capital improvements, they can't raise your rent 6% and get a bonus rent in there. Bonus is out. They don't get that. 
and they can only raise it 2%, and after it's done, they have to reduce it back down to the original rent. Now, I don't think it went far enough. See, for us, we have some rent regulation of housing developments, but places like Star Red City and other, they already regulated by Michelama. So we already have some affordability, but my concern is that they should have put that in it anyway, so in the event they opt out of Michelama, then we need to be regulated, and it needs to be the regulations like everybody else. So I'm concerned about it not going far enough, and we're talking to the speaker about that. So it was a very, very uh, grueling six months for me up in Albany. I do have a reparations bill that is now a reparations bill. You don't have to go all the way to Washington, all my friends and everybody going to Washington to testify about reparations. You can go right to Albany and support my bill. My bill says slavery was in New York City. New York City has slavery from 1626 to 1827. It was the second largest slave-holding city in the entire country. Only South Charleston, South Carolina have more. And so we say set up a community commission, let the commission determine the form of reparations, the amount of reparations, and who should receive reparations. All of these debates that the people having, like only the Africans and Americans get it. No, all of us should get it. They're not giving it to you, nobody. They're not giving it to nobody. Let's get the commission and let them do it. And if they say, well, how much? How much, Charles, how much? Don't try to figure out nothing. Let the commission decide that. And when they do say, some people say, we owe six trillion if you add it all up. And they say, well, ha, 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 the national budget is only four trillion. Well, your national debt is 20 trillion. So if you can pay a little on the debt, you can pay a little on our debt, because that's what reparations is. It's a debt owed. It's a debt owed. And these Democrats, don't be fooled by the Democrats. You see how everybody's talking about reparations now? Half of them don't even know how to spell it. They're up there having hearings on reparations. And let me tell you the real deal. If the Democrats were serious about reparations and John Conyers bill, H.R. 40, you heard that, H.R. 40? In 2008, when Barack Obama was president, you had a Democratic black president, you had a Democratic Senate, you had a Democratic House of Representatives for two years, and you had John Conyers, the sponsor of H.R. 40, his bill was in the Judiciary Committee, and he was the chair. <laughs> but in those two years, it never got a hearing, and it never got a vote. And now you want to have a hearing on it? When you have a Republican Senate and a racist, lying, madman in the White House, you now want to talk about reparations? You know why? Because Hillary Clinton lost because the black vote didn't come out in the numbers that they came out for Barack. So she lost. So since they don't have Barack Obama to get you out to vote, they want to use reparations. Yes, they, do. they know it's not passing, it's not going nowhere, and we don't allow them to play political football with a life and death issue of reparations. You stole us, you worked us, you owe us. Pay us our reparations. Thank you. First, I want to say I give honor to God, who's the head of my life, and to whom I look each and every day to protect me, direct me, correct me, and favor me. And I want to acknowledge the great work that this community board is continuing to do. Yes. I want to acknowledge that we are here in this beautiful center because of the hard work that my predecessor, my husband, Charles Barron, did when he was in the city council and pushing to make sure that as a development, that's on the other three corners of this block went up, that we would have the developer bring this to fruition. And we have this beautiful center here for our community named in, on behalf of Prince Joshua Vito. So let's give it up for my husband for the hard work that he did. So I'm gonna be, try to be brief. My office is located on the corner of Pennsylvania and Hegeman, and it's been under renovation for about five months. 
because the landlord is a landlord, as many of you know about, doesn't take care of his property. We had a bad leak. Uh, the buildings department came in, inspected, and there were beams that were compromised, so they had to be repaired. So that's why my office is still closed. But stay tuned, because we may be moving. <laughs> because we came back after the work was done, and we got another leak. So we may be moving. We'll let you know. We'll keep you posted. However, I do want to say that we are working. And if you're going to have some issues, you can see my staff member. Anita is here. Anita Fisher, please stand up. You all know Anita. And you can certainly continue to call my office because we are working. 718-649-9495. And I'm glad that one of the constituents said that she came to our office and we gave her some assistance. That's what we're there for. And we will certainly continue to do that work regardless of the circumstances. Tomorrow, there is a meeting at um, UCC at 6.30 because we are going to have a total renovation of what's now called Skank Park, but which will be called Sankofa Park. Sankofa Park. So as my husband said, slavery existed in New York City. We were enslaved here. And right here in East New York, we worked, we cleared the forest, we tilled the land, we built the houses, and there were remains that were left uninterred underneath the park. And there were, as we're beginning to do renovations on the park, we're going to have a ceremony in July, during which time we're going to reinter the remains. But tomorrow night at 6.30, we're inviting you to come to UCC so that you can be involved in how we lay out the plans for what the new park will look like. Now, I also am so pleased to say uh, there was someone here from the library before, and she mentioned uh, the, new the Flatlands Library. East New York, we are going to have a brand new, from the ground up, constructed library at New Lots. A brand new library is coming to New Lots. There are only three that are going to be built in the city, and one of those three is going to be in our community. So I'm really pleased about that, and I think it's a great opportunity because the libraries are a great equalizer. It's an opportunity for us to be able to access the resources that we can use to improve ourselves, to be able to get online, and to be able to get access to other kinds of information. Um, continuing that, I just want to say the budget has been passed, and there have been significant increases in this year's budget. Someone talked about sanitation. There are additional millions of dollars that have been put in because it's an issue all around the city. So there will be improved uh, pickup and there will be increased baskets that are put out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, that's not for your household trash, okay? So please, when you tell your people there are gonna be more baskets, remind them it's for those little things that you had in your bag when you left your house and you didn't want to put it back in your bag, those little wrappers and things, that's what it's for. And people do abuse that and have dumping, so we've got to make sure that we educate people that's not what it's for. Okay, so please, we'll be having increased baskets, but uh, please make sure it's just for that. Uh, now, you know, if you go out and across the street, you will see that the work that's being done on Sunny Carson Park is moving swiftly, and it looks Beautiful. It looks beautiful. We're hoping, you know, that it's been right on schedule. Uh, you know, when you're excited, it's like waiting for Christmas. You can't wait, you can't wait. But we've got to make sure that everything is done in a timely fashion and in order of the construction protocol. So we will be able to have that opening. Oh, okay, thank you. We will be able to have that opening. Now, if you see some children, you know, being a little ambitious, and getting on the field, in a nice way, tell them, no, no, you shouldn't be in there. Come out so that you don't get hurt. That's the most important thing. And that, that, that they don't get exposed to uh, what are some of the products that are being used in the construction of this field. Someone said that they saw some children there. Just gently coax them out so that we don't have any accidents and we are going to have the contractor go back and re-secure that so that it's tighter. If you're looking for some activities for your young children, we invite you to consider 
having your child learn to play tennis. Okay, you know there's beautiful, newly renovated tennis courts. I think it was last year, or maybe the year before, uh, the U.S. Tennis Association contributed significant money to resurfacing all of the tennis courts that are there. And we have classes that were going to be opening July 5th, and your child will be able to have a tennis racket supplied to them, and they will have instruction free of charge. Free of charge. And that's from Monday through Friday, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. That's a golden opportunity. That's a golden opportunity. We may, next have this, we may have the next set of Williams sisters right here and not know it, okay? So please take advantage of that. Uh, and there'll be all kinds of activities. And then when it concludes, there I think is an opportunity for the students to go to uh, the pre-opening events at the Tennis Open in Queens, so give them that opportunity. And I do wanna comment on the first presentation or earlier today where the group talked about the elected civilian review board. So just to briefly talk about what that means is, you know, at this point, this, the review board reviews the case and makes a recommendation to the police commissioner and the police, the police commissioner can accept it or reject it. The most severe punishment that the commissioner has given has been a loss of vacation days. That has been the tantamount penalty that these officers have received. So the group that came to me and asked me to introduce this legislation, I said, yes, I will do it. And it's going to be a battle. It's going to be an uphill battle. But, you know, we're used to battling. That's the only way we get anything is by battling. They don't give us anything. So I want to thank them for coming. And they're making rounds all across the city. I've been getting my colleagues saying, oh, Inez, there was a group that came and said you're introducing legislation. I said, yes, I am. And we've got to talk it up. So the legislation wants to have an independent investigator, and it wants to have the recommendations of the board, the elected civilian review board, be binding so that the commissioner cannot lessen whatever those uh, punishments are. And lastly, today I had legislation that was passed which requires restaurants to post in their establishments, you listening to this? Okay. <laughs> to post in their establishments the fact that we need to be mindful of our caloric intake. Now you know when you went to school you learned that of course we need carbs because that's how we get our energy. But the body processes those carbohydrates and turns them into sugars. Okay, so all those starches and things that you eat turn into sugars. And we want you to be mindful that diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death. We want you to be mindful that, as someone said, you've got to exercise. You have to eat healthy, and we want you to not, uh, not forget that those carbs are turning into sugars, and protect yourself, and make some changes, and make some adjustments, and limit your carbs if that's a situation you are, because lots of people are pre-diabetic. I think in New York, in the United States, there are, I think, 82 million people who have diabetes and 56 million who are pre-diabetic. So that means you're heading towards that. So we're pleased to say that the legislation passed and the next time that restaurant owners uh, get an inspection, they'll be told on that checklist, oh, you need to have a posting about healthy living choices. So there will not be any penalties. You'll have a whole year to get the posting up, and we're excited about that as well. And finally, once again, there were significant increases in the budget, particularly in terms of programs for youth. The summer youth employment numbers were expanded. The sanitation is expanded. The aging, the seniors programs were expanded. And I will be putting those highlights into my newsletter so that everybody will be aware of that. And how many people are going to come out tomorrow? Uh-oh. Okay, so we'll be looking for you at 6.30 tomorrow at UCC. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Once again, can we clap it up for our Councilwoman Inez Barron, Assemblymember Charles Barron. Thank you both. So just give us a time check, just so everybody know, we are under a really tight time constraint. At the building, we have to literally, this is not like other buildings, we have a maintenance team that's very shy tonight. We have to make sure that WNET, can we thank you for, for, thank for WNET? We forget, I appreciate you all. This is their sixth actual meeting of the year, and we appreciate them for covering us. And for the record, for those that don't know, you could look at this meeting is being live streamed. And so that folks that are at home could be watching the meeting live on their home tablets or televisions or smart TVs or phones um, on YouTube. Um, with that said, I'm going to have to just acknowledge the rest of the elected officials, staff that are present. And um, I want to respectfully give them the acknowledgments. As mentioned, Ms. Anita Fisher is present from Councilwoman Inez Barron's office. Mel Van Faulkner is here from Assemblymember Charles Barron's office. Lucille Moultrie is here from Assemblywoman Latrice Walker's office. I see my brother, Brother Malcolm McDaniel is here from Bell President Eric Adams' office. But I will give Anthony Drummond, if you care to want to say something for the Bell President's office, I will give him an opportunity to make a testimony. Um, Anthony Drummond from Bell President Eric um, Adams' office. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. All right. Um, just real br brief, uh, uh, one, uh, the borough president's office, we have our packet of information of events that we're going to be having during the summer. Just want to highlight um, just one event in particular that's going to be taking place at Borough Hall tomorrow is the Caribbean Heritage Celebration that's going to be happening at Borough Hall from 6 to 9, maybe 10 o'clock. Uh, but um, everyone is welcome. And the only thing that I have to say, well, one, I want to welcome also and the new members of the community board. Um, so <laughs> welcome and um, congratulations. Hopefully you continue to attend the meetings um, to continue to make quorum. And then also I just want to wish everyone here um, in the community a great summer and hopefully a safe summer so enjoy and look forward to seeing you guys all in september thank Thanks. you anthony right. i also want to just acknowledge miss paulette forbes is here if you've been seeing a survey circulating itself around um she's here from brookdale um, um health and hospital but um the east brooklyn call to action is the name of the survey um dr torian easterlin uh, is one of the assistant commissioners at the Department of Health. And we're asking everybody to fill out the quick survey. It's just a check for one through four kind of thing. So we appreciate her for being here as well. So folks, what we would like to do, because when, as a board, can the community board members that are present still, can they please raise their hand? Board members that are sitting in and around the audience. I want for people to recognize who you are um, because we have been very, very good. This year, we've been listening to everybody, and we encourage sometimes for people, because we put you first, you should not leave because you got your two cents off. All right? You should stick around and listen to board business and see how things are to flow. And with that said, I want to move through the agenda board members everybody have. I'm going to really speed through this. I see her. But I'm going to speed through it. Yes, Mrs. Uh, going on here. <laughs> We're going to do it right now. Thank you, Sister Perkins. So the beauty of us doing this, too, is wisely we wanted to make sure that board members made it to the site wherever we was having a meeting. So we are at quorum. Yeah, we are at quorum. We are at quorum, and that's a great way to finish off the year. So I will entertain a motion to approve the agenda that you all have. Motion approved, Mr. Florentino. It's second by Mrs. Mother Vivian Bright. All those members in favor say aye. aye. Any objections? The agenda that you have is approved. The uh, minutes 
that we could not approve for the last five months. Our six months, all right, you have in your folders. I will entertain a motion to approve those minutes made by Ms. Joyce Scott Brayboy, second by Ms. Uh, Helen um, Jarrett, my lovely sister. All those members in favor say aye. aye. Any objections? The minutes for the last six months has just been approved. Committee reports, I'm going to speed past committee reports because of time. Respectfully, we don't have anything that needs to go to vote. So respectfully, um, there is a Brooklyn um, District Need Survey Board members that is inside your folders. Please, if you can, review it and complete it and turn it in tonight. We would greatly appreciate it because we have to turn that in, a Brooklyn Needs, our Community Needs Assessment Survey. I will, of course, give our district manager an opportunity if she wants to brief. She was the sister that just came up here to tell us about the five months, but is she's the best district manager that we have to date. Ms. Melinda Perkins will come forward with her committee or with her district report. And I want to thank her district office staff. Let's thank them up because they do a fantastic job all year round. Do you see that new tent that we got over there? Mr. Noah? Just wanted to point out the tent. You know what I mean? But there you go. Go ahead, sister. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? I'm just going to make one quick announcement because we are pressed for time that in addition to the beautiful tent and all of those great things, we also ordered the zoning handbook, the latest edition for each one of our board members. Yes. And we are we working, for that. we're working with Richard Birak to come out and do a full training on zoning in our community and the comparatives with other communities. So look out for that date. Come to the office and pick up your individual books, not just your beautiful shirts, which you look great in. Um, but that's all, and my report is in your folders if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. The chairman's report, I did try to hand, you know, deliver to any and every member that was present, and I want to, you know, just go over it really briefly. But without that, my most important piece is, can we please just thank and welcome all the new community board members that are present? Can you please stand? New community board members that have been appointed. The Calvary has arrived. Brother Mary, we got some great new members, Miss Mitchell and others, active people, brother, Juan Bravos, and so many of you that have now become part of this great community board, Sister uh, Torres. Um, those of you that were community committee members, you were coming to meetings. We made it so that you got appointed. We want to thank the borough president's office um, and their staff for listening to CB5 for our recommendations. We want to thank the councilwoman, the councilmen, and the borough president for making these appointees. But as mentioned, this is an assignment that you signed up for. I believe you attended the orientation, you sworn in, and all that other great stuff. But here back at the ranch, we are, are just just appealing to you that we need you present, okay? We have to move a lot of these motions through, a lot of agendas, a lot of items, and we need you present on committees. So I want you to just remember that it's not that large of a commitment. It averages out if you're just an average board member twice a month, it's, that's all it acts. That's literally twice a month. But if you become a part of leadership, it's three times a month, okay? But welcome. We look for, we have a welcome reception that we hold at CB5. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just wanted to let the brother know. Welcome reception uh, at CB5. And we're going to be letting you know about that very soon because we want to like, welcome you in. And look at the shirts. Do you see the shirts, CB5? Huh? Look at those look, board member shirts. I know that's right. But if you go outside, it really is weather like, right? So we want you to use them shirts over the summer because we're going to have a lot of things going on. We, we call it the summer of peace, but there's a lot of things. We look to hold our own block party this summer um, in August. So please, board members, keep the shirts nice, clean, and white. <laughs> no, but honestly, I really want to thank everybody. I wanted to let every board member know, and if I can do it really, really, really fast, 
I want to call board members' names out really, 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 really fast because we also got something different. We want to acknowledge our board members for their, for their volunteerism. I would like for those board members to please come forward if you hear my name. We want to award you a certificate from CB5 of volunteerism um, that because of your, your outstanding community service, Ms. Hazel Worley, we want to welcome and thank you for your service. She's not here. Andrew Walcott, if you could please, Brother Andrew Walcott. Brother Angus Fisher, Brother Angus Fisher right here, one of our executive board members. Sister Gina Watson, thank you so much, Sister Gina. Miss Helen Jarrett as well, yes, that's right, that's where we got your name up here too. Come on down, thank you. Brother Kenneth Watson, Brother Kenny Watson. Come on now, brother. Thank you so much for your volunteerism. Brother Miguel Feliciano. Brother Damian Machado. Yeah. Sister Andrea Mitchell. My sister Mitchell, where you at? Sister Ortega, where you at, my sister? Thank you. Brother Miss Finn is not here. Um, Dean is not here. Brother Corian Lewis is. Here, no, Montres, Niles. Well, come on, sister, come on down. This is you, right? This is Lewis's sister, Lewis Cork. Thank you so much. I apologize. Brother Alberto Ramos, and congratulations to the new president of the Police Community Council. Huh? Huh? President of the new brother Saeed uh, Kasru. Is he here with brother at? Oh, come and get your, come and get your certificate, brother Sa uh, Saeed. Brother Abdul Sattar is also present. Yes, congratulations, brother. Brother's not here. Sister Leslie Mullen Fields is present. Come on and get your certificate of volunteerism. No. Sister Sharon Brown is also present. Please, Sister Sharon. No. Now there were some other names, and I want to call the other names out because you can put that with that. We have some other special awards. We just want to call it out. This award is for a certificate for excellence in, in its committee structure and continue out um, discipline of the continued structure. Brother Wilfredo Florentino, we want to give you this special award. Continuity. That's the name of the word. Our mother, we want to give her a certificate for community justice, equality, and liberation. Mother Viola Plummer, our chair. Our chair of land use. Our certificate for community empowerment to our sergeant in of, of arms, mother and sister Joyce Scott Brayboy. and a certificate of longevity and commitment to the volunteerism here at CB5, our mother Vivian Bright. Come on, mother Vivian. One of our long-term community board members. We love her. She taught us well. Thank you. We have another certificate for youth engagement, and that young brother speaks very well at every community board meeting. Brother Charles Bullock, we want to give you. And a certificate for participation and commitment to our first vice, Sister Alice Lohman. A certificate for advocacy in police injustice, none other than our very own brother Vincent Wiggins. See? Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Mm. Certificate for advocacy in homeowner justice, our brother Albert Scott Jr. This is 
Certificate for Advocacy in Community Justice, Brother Paul Muhammad. And another certificate for youth engagement, none other than our chair of our Education and Youth Committee, Sister Jessica Franco. Am I right, board members? How you feel? And you should, because you volunteered on behalf of a great community. You gave up your time and your effort, and we are greatly appreciative of it in our community board our district office, we wanted to just again recognize you and tell you that we thank you from the bottom of our heart on behalf of our great community. And I hope you feel good, because you should, and you look good. With that all being said, anything in old business, don't think so. Don't, there's nothing going on in new business, don't think so. Please remember to fill out the survey for the district need assessment. Sister, she come up here one more time. If they we try to thank God for transformative transformative pardon me transformative leadership as the elected chair for Brooklyn Community Board 5 Andre yeah. Thank you Somebody Yes they did they got that tea in there I will now entertain a motion to adjourn by Ola Plummer, second by Gina Watson. All those members in favor say aye. aye. Any objections? The ayes have it. Happy summer 2019. Thank you, WNET. Please, everybody, leave safely. Clean up behind yourselves. We will see you all back in September, but please stay in touch. Thank you so much. <laughs>